that um, these these functions are going to uh, not be nice smooth curves. Because think about how we could write tangent. Could I write tangent of x as um, sine of x over cosine of x? So does that mean that sometimes tangent of x is undefined? So does that mean on my graph I might have some asymptotes, some places where tangent's never going to be defined at? And that's going to be true for all the rest of the trig functions, because all of them can be written with a trig function uh, in the bottom here. So the big thing that I want you to focus on today is tangent is always going to have asymptotes. And where is it going to have asymptotes? It's going to, well, I'm just going to write this. It's going to be undefined when cosine of x equals 0. Because cosine is in the denominator. And so we can think about what are some angles where cosine equals zero. Cosine is the x-coordinate, so where does the x-coordinate equal zero? That means at pi halves, at three pi halves. I could keep going if I wanted positive. I could also go negative. Could I throw in negative pi halves, negative three pi halves? Any time it gets to the x, uh, sorry, the y-axis, do you agree that the x-coordinate is going to be zero? And so these are going to be my asymptotes. So just like any function that we've ever graphed with asymptotes, if you can find your asymptotes first, it kind of gives you some boundaries for your graph. And so for these functions, I always say, let's find our asymptotes first, and then we can go back and pick some points in between our asymptotes just like we've always done. Um, so let's just go to 2 pi like we've done in the past. Let's put our first graph here. And so we'll cut it up to 2 pi. And then half of 2 pi is pi. And I'm going to go halfway in between so I get those lovely points from my unit circle that I like so much. I'm going to do the same thing over here on the negative side. And I don't know, let's just label some y uh, axis values here. I'm just going to go with like 4. <coughs> because unlike sine and cosine, um, tangent can be bigger than 1. Right? Tangent is um, opposite over adjacent, and so uh, it's allowed to be bigger than 1. And uh, when I draw my asymptotes in, I'm going to draw dotted lines, just like we've always done, to show that those are just places that my graph's never going to touch. So I know that at pi halves, my graph's going to be undefined. Can I miss there? And at 3 pi halves, and at negative pi halves, I mean, that's definitely not even, that's okay. And negative three times. <laughs> and then I'm going to make a lovely little xy chart, and let's just pick some points in between the asymptotes, and maybe we can figure out a good way that we can pick some lovely points that work out every time so nicely, just like my key points for sine and cosine. Um, Let's start in between these two, even though one's negative, one's positive. What's halfway in between these two asymptotes? Zero. So let's pick zero. And again, uh, sometimes the hardest part is knowing these values. Um, what is the tangent of zero? Tangent, you can think about sine over cosine if you want, or another way to think about sine over cosine is y over x. Right? At zero, what would y over x be? 0 over 1, or just 0? Tangent of 0 is 0? Well, I kind of need more points than that. So uh, what if we go halfway in between now? We pick halfway in between asymptotes. Now what if we pick halfway in between here and my asymptote? What would be halfway between 0 and pi half? Pi fourths? Pi fourths is my favorite angle to take the tangent of. Because what is the ordered pair at pi fourths? 
Square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So what happens when I put those over each other? What's the tangent of pi fourths? Just 1, right? Because you get the same thing over the same thing. Or if you draw the triangle, it's 1 over 1. Oh, that's my favorite one. And I can say at pi fourths, it goes up here from 1. But if we uh, went backwards halfway between, what's halfway in between 0 and um, negative pi halves? Negative pi fourths. Again, think about your negative angles here. That would be this angle down here, right? In quadrant four. And is that still the square two over two stuff? Only one of them is negative. In quadrant four, which one's negative? The x or the y? The y. And so that would be square root of two over two negative square root of two over two. So what happens when I put those over each other? I just get negative one. How lovely. Um, do you remember the whole even odd function? Was tangent an even function or an odd function? Odd, cosine, and it's reciprocal were the only ones that were even. Which means this should make sense for you. If this side goes up and it's an odd function, then this side's going to go down at that same point. So that's something else to remember. Um, it kind of looks like a straight line here, but remember with asymptotes, as it gets closer and closer to it, it kind of curves and gets closer and closer to the asymptote. So when you graph this, it's going to be kind of a curvy line. Like this side's going to go up and get really close to that asymptote, and this side's going to curve and go down and get really close to that asymptote. And let's do one more just to see what happens here. Um, what if I... Well, I don't know. Probably have to do two full periods, but we got to figure out what is a period in tangent. We haven't discussed that yet, right? So... I don't know. Let's see. It's a period if we just keep repeating ourselves. So let's see if we get the exact same thing over here. And if it does, then that means this is one period. What happens if I take the tangent of pi? That means I'm back over on the x-axis, but I'm on the negative side. What is y over x over there? <laughs> when I'm <laughs> this is what we did last chapter, right? Oh, I know that. Tangent of pi means I'm thinking about at pi, I'm over here, and that's the order pair, negative 1, 0. So I can either think about it as sine over cosine or y over x, 0 over negative 1. Right? But do you agree that at pi, I'm still going to get 0? What's going to be the angle in between um, pi halves and pi, halfway in between pi halves and pi. 3 pi fourths. Three pi fourths would be up here. You could draw a triangle if you want. I've kind of been a unit circle person today. But do you agree that's still the square root of 2 over 2 stuff? But in quadrant 2, is one of them negative? So is that going to be negative 1? That's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. Or, if you prefer, that would be negative 1, 1. So you still get negative 1 if you draw a triangle. Which means that it would go down like this. Does it look like we're just going to repeat ourselves? If we go in between pi and 3 pi halves, am I going to get a fourth again? Uh, only that's going to be, what, 5 pi fours? And that's going to be positive 1, because in quadrant 3, it's going to be a negative over a negative, which is a positive, which means it does go back up. And so the great thing about tangent, although it looks really weird because it has these asymptotes, if you know where the asymptotes are, and you can make one of those little curvy graphs, it's just going to repeat itself over and over again, every time. And notice the points I picked. Halfway in between the asymptotes, halfway in between that, and those are where I got my lovely little points every time. Well, we could change the period, which is going to change it just like we did before, right? So we have to figure out what that is. Because as long as it's just tangent of x, it's going to do this. And what if I put a number in front of this? And that's going to change it. Um, I can fill this one in without even doing anything. It's going to be this exact same pattern. So halfway in between is going to be a 0. When I go on this side, it's going to go up to 1. When I go on this side, it's going to go down to 1. And I just graphed three periods of that. Yes. 
Well, usually I say graph at least two periods. Uh, if they give you a graph to fill in, I always say fill the whole graph in. Show that you know it continues, right? Like technically speaking, what would happen here at 2 pi? It'd be a 0, and I'd get this top half again like this, right? That would be filling it in. But usually my directions say graph two full periods. So as long as you graph two periods, I don't care which ones they are. And over here, what would happen at this 2 pi? It would be a zero there, and then it would go down, and I'd get the bottom half of that one, right? Like if I was going to fill that entire graph in that I, that I drew. Um, what could we say about the uh, domain of this? Is it all real numbers? Definitely not all real numbers because it has asymptotes. The tricky part is writing this domain. I'm going to write it out for you. Um, the domain is everywhere but where there's an asymptote. Do you agree that the asymptotes are just going to keep repeating forever, just like this graph keeps repeating it forever? So we can't say everywhere but pi halves and 3 pi halves because it's also not defined at 5 pi halves and 7 pi halves. So uh, I'm going to say the domain is every x but x cannot equal pi halves plus... Um, what do I add the pi halves to get to the next asymptote? Mm. How far is pi halves to 3 pi halves? How far have I traveled? Pi. pi. So pi halves plus any multiple of pi. So how do we write that in math terms? We say pi halves plus pi times n, where n is an integer. Are you going to have to write that out on your test? No. But that's how we would write the domain of this. What about the range of this? Yeah, unlike sine and cosine, this one goes up forever and down forever, getting closer and closer to those asymptotes. So there is no restriction on your y values. Um, what about the period on this? Um, how long did it take me, or what's the distance between the two asymptotes? That's another way to think about the period of this one. Like how far is it from here to here, or from here to here? Pi. It's just pi. So the period of tangent is just pi, whereas the period of sine and cosine was 2 pi when we first graphed it. That's kind of an interesting graph, yes? So just like sine and cosine, I want to focus on what happens when we throw other numbers in. So notice my same points A, B, C, and D are in here. Just like sine and cosine, you want to find your key points. And for me, I kind of do the asymptotes first, and we'll kind of work this out in just a minute. But if you find the asymptotes, then you can find the key points by taking halfway and halfway in between that. Thank you. We talked about that the, the period is just pi. Well, what if there's a b value in there? Well, um then you're going to have to take pi over b, just like we did before. The good thing about tangent is unlike sine and cosine, you don't really have to know to take that much. If you just know the period is how far it is between the asymptotes, and that formula is going to be pi over b, whatever b is, is going to determine what your period is. This means it's going to be the same kind of shape, but we could just make it wider or closer together. Um, think about amplitude for sine and cosine. Uh, amplitude was like the high and the low point. Well, on tangent, there is no high and low point. So there is no amplitude on tangent. So there will never be a question that asks you to give me the amplitude of a tangent function because there is no high and low point. It, it's undefined. And the big thing is, C is still going to be like your phase shift, how much is moving left to right. Again, I'm not going to really make you do a whole lot with that, except for you can find the asymptotes for that using C. We're going to write that in a minute. D is still your vertical shift, so if you want to write that out, you can again. They never even talk about the vertical shift in the book because they assume that you just remember that. <laughs> 
But the key part is locating those asymptotes. So, because tangent of x has asymptotes uh, that occur at pi halves and negative pi halves, those would be two consecutive asymptotes. If you want to find two consecutive asymptotes, all you have to do is set what's in this parentheses here, the bx minus c equal to pi halves and equal to negative pi halves, and solve it out. And we're going to do another graphing one in a minute. This is my first step that I say you do every time. Just like for sine and cosine, my first step is find the amplitude by the period. For tangent, let's find two asymptotes in a row, so then we can just repeat the pattern after that. Oh, and if you want to show this here, the midpoint or halfway in between your two asymptotes will always be where it crosses the x-intercept, which means it always gives you like a free point if you know your asymptote. Halfway in between should always be your x-intercept, and then you take halfway in between those to get your other point. And then I just want to graph one with a little bit of change in it. Um, just like before, if there's a negative in front, a negative is going to be a reflection. Um, so if you see a negative, that means that little S shape is going to flip over and go the other way. Um, a number in front is going to change it, but it's not. It's going to change your Y values a little bit, but not too much. Uh, well, they're not ever going to ask you for a phase shift on this one. They're going to ask you the, the asymptotes. And this is kind of our key point here for our asymptotes. So the first thing that I do when I'm doing tangent or any graph that has asymptotes is I'm going to find my two asymptotes because that's going to help me make my graph just like the period and the amplitude help me on sine and cosine. And I'm going to use the fact that I'm going to take whatever's here, the bx minus c, and set it equal to pi halves and negative pi halves and solve that out each time. Sometimes it's really easy, like this one's not so bad. Do you agree there's no c value in this problem? Just like I said before, I'm not going to make you graph anything with the phase shift by hand, so I'm not going to give you anything on this one either to graph by hand. But to find my asymptotes, I'm going to set what's here equal to pi halves, and I'm going to set it equal to negative pi halves. That's what we just wrote out at the last slide. And if you solve that for x, that gives you two asymptotes in a row. means I know when I make my graph, two asymptotes in a row are going to occur at negative pi and pi, and I can figure out where the next one's going to occur also. Well, ones you have to graph by hand aren't going to be, because you're not going to graph any by hand with C. Either. I promise. So, um, if I make a mark here, and I make this negative pi, and I make a mark here, and I make this pi, I know from this that that's where I'm going to have two asymptotes. 
two consecutive asymptotes, which means there's no asymptotes in between there. Well, we're going to get there. That's why it's made it in the middle. Because we're going to probably graph two periods of this. But I just want to kind of show you how you can use this to help you. What always occurs halfway between your two asymptotes? Your x-intercept, which means we can make an x-y chart and we can plug it in if you want. But every time, if you make your two asymptotes, halfway in between, which would be right here, is where that's going to cross the x-axis. And we can check. If we plug 0 in there, tangent of 0 is 0. So that's kind of like a free point if you have your asymptotes. What are the other two points you should pick? Halfway in between that and your asymptote. So on this one, what would halfway in between 0 and pi be? Pi add. And this way would be negative pi halves, right? Plug it in and see what happens. What happens when I plug pi halves in there? What is tangent of pi halves divided by 2? Step 1. What is pi halves divided by 2? Isn't this pi halves times 1 half? Right? So you split that 2 over, that's pi fourths. Right? The 2 don't cancel. It's the same as saying pi fourths. And what is the tangent of pi fours? One, which means just like with sine and cosine, it's not a coincidence that we're getting pi fours when we plug that in because we love pi fours for tangent because the tangent of pi fours is one or any multiple of that could be negative one, which means that it's going to go up to one on this side. And what's going to happen when I plug negative pi halves in? It's going to go to negative one, which is why knowing the pattern is so nice. And so I can make that same graph, but I've kind of just widened it because now I'm going from negative pi to pi. The period of this is how far apart you are from the asymptotes. How far apart is it from negative pi to pi? Two pi, which means the period on this, or the distance between the asymptotes, should be two pi. Yeah, they're, they're equations. Asymptotes are equations. So my question is, if I wanted to graph another um, period, where would that next asymptote be if I know I need to go 2 pi to get to it? 3 pi? Does that make sense to everyone? Because I'm at pi. I need to go to 3 pi. So I can kind of go like halfway in between here would be 2 pi, and then over here would be 3 pi. And I don't have to pick any points on this. You can pick as many as you want. But I know that next asymptote is going to be at 3 pi. And what else do I know? It just keeps repeating the pattern. So what happens halfway in between pi and 3 pi? It touches the x-axis. And what's going to happen halfway in between each of those? One's going to go up. No, one's going to go up. It's fine. You can just graph the one, and I'll know. Usually I do this. Like, I might make little marks halfway in between, but I don't actually label it. You can if you want. And it repeats itself. And that is two periods. So unless it's said to make more periods, I could leave it at that. So it's not the worst thing in the world, maybe. I feel like there's less points to pick. <sighs> What's going to happen if we graph cotangent? Mm, yeah, I think it's going to flip a little bit. Let's look. Why this is label number two? I don't know what the last one was labeled. Was it label number two? <laughs> oh, okay. Is cotangent of x going to have asymptotes? If we can write tangent as sine over cosine, how can we write cotangent? Cosine over sine. So are the asymptotes going to be in the same place on cotangent that they are on tangent? No, they're going to be where sine is undefined, right? 
it's going to be undefined where sine of x equals 0. And I honestly, every time I graph one of these, do I automatically know where the asymptotes are? No, I think about what's on the bottom and where does that equal 0. That's where my asymptotes are going to be. So sine is the y coordinate, which means where does y equal 0 on the my unit circle? So say 0 and pi and 2 pi and 3 pi and so on and so forth. Everywhere on the x-axis that it touches. So we could say again that these are going to be my asymptotes. The nice thing is it's very similar to tangent. It has asymptotes. It's even kind of the same shape. But the big thing is you got to get the asymptotes in the right spot. So let's go ahead and make our graph to 2 pi again. I'm going to graph my asymptotes first because then I know I can go in between there to make the graph. Uh, but these have asymptotes at 0, pi, 2 pi. I'm going to have an asymptote along the y-axis because that would be at 0. And then at pi. And then at 2 pi. And I can even say back here at negative pi and negative 2 pi. Notice the distance in between the asymptotes is pi. The period for cotangent is the same as the period for tangent. It's pi over b, whatever b happens to be. If you want to write that out here, you can go ahead and do that. The period is always going to still just be pi over b. But the big difference is the asymptotes show up in a different spot. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick a point halfway in between and halfway between that. And what happens if I pick halfway in between 0 and pi? What's that value going to be? And cotangent of pi hat is x over y, right? And at pi hat, do you agree that's 0 over 1? So at pi hat, I'm going to get 0. So just like tangent, it's halfway in between the asymptotes, always going to give me my x-intercept again. Yes, it looks like I get a free point in there. I know they're halfway in between. It's going to always be zero because that's always going to be on the y-axis. Uh, if I go halfway in between that, am I going to get my favorite angle again for tangent and cotangent, pi force, or a multiple of that? But pi force would be back here, right? And what is the cotangent of pi force? Square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 2 over 2. Still just 1, but that means back here is going to go up to 1, right? And when I pick 3 pi fourths, which is on this side, in quadrant 2, where's that going to go? Or what's that going to be? That's going to be my negative 1, because in quadrant 2 the signs are different. So I still kind of get that little squiggly shape, but do you see that it's facing the opposite way that it did on tangent? Like on tangent, this side went up and this side went down. On cotangent, this side goes up and this side goes down. So it's very easy to get these mixed up, but they're very similar too. So if you know how to graph tangent, it's really the same except for the asymptotes change. Um, and it's just going to repeat itself, which means I can know back if I go halfway in between here, it's going to go up. This side's going to go down, and I can just keep going. We could say that uh, my domain is all x's except for 
Um, any multiple of pi. So we could just say pi n. X cannot be pi n. Because if n was 0, that would be my 0. And do you agree my range is going to be all real numbers again? When you're graphing these, it's just like tangent, except for when you're finding your two asymptotes. So I'm just going to kind of throw this down here. When you're finding your two consecutive asymptotes, don't leave the spelling. Consecutive asymptotes. Yeah, you got to set it equal to two consecutive asymptotes for this. So you're going to set bx minus c equal to zero and bx minus c equal to pi. And when you solve that, that will give you your two asymptotes halfway in between and so on and so forth. Some of your homework today is just matching the graph with the picture. Like they give you the graph in an equation. So think about where the asymptotes are to help you when you're doing that. Some of them you're definitely graphing yourself. And some of them are kind of like our 4-4 day one that we didn't quite get to today, um, but we'll talk about tomorrow. But use what you know of to solve the angle. If it says where does tangent equal 1, then give me what angles that happens at. And so we'll talk about that more tomorrow, but today we're kind of just going to end it right here if we're okay with that. Your homework is on your assignment sheet, but it's right here if you don't have it written down. This is 4-5 day 1. I need to box the please. I need Kayla Williams, Aubrey Williams, Josh Meinhardt.